Hey guys, so this is going to be a random spur of the moment video for me. A lot of people ask me questions about what happened to me to make me an atheist, at what point in my life did I become an atheist, and there wasn't one catastrophic event in my life that happened to me. A lot of people phrase it like that too, what must have happened to you? There's nothing wrong with me, nothing traumatic happened. It was actually a really gradual and slow process, and it was something that I fought myself on because I grew up Catholic. I was raised Catholic from kindergarten to my senior year in high school. And then in college I became evangelical and I felt like I needed it, like I was gonna go to hell. I felt like I needed to tell other people otherwise they were gonna go to hell. I was nuts. Um, <laughs> and then eventually I slowly started to let go of it because I was lying to myself and it took me a long time to admit to myself that it was a giant lie. My doubt probably started whenever I was in high school because one of my best friends was gay and I never in my life, even whenever I was at my most right-wing, most evangelical point, did I ever discriminate against people who were gay because that was a normal thing to me because my best friend was gay and whenever people discriminated against him, it just, it did not make sense. So to see other people use the very religion that I held so near and dear to my heart to bash someone that I was also very close to, I just couldn't reconcile that. And whenever I looked in the Bible and read Leviticus where it actually said that you should put homosexuals to death, I tried for a long time to cherry pick that, but eventually I had to come to terms with the fact that that's in there and it should not be. The morality that I have is a secular morality. It's a morality that I get from the society that I live in, from the people that are around me, and from what I personally feel is right and wrong. It's definitely not something that I got out of a book like that, that condones murder, uh, is against gay people, condones rape, condones slavery. I mean, if you actually read it, it's a very, fucked up book to be honest and whenever you're raised Catholic you read the catechism of the Catholic Church and also certain cherry-picked Bible verses are read at mass but you never actually read the Bible so doing that was one thing that actually really helped a lot of people are like what book can I read and they're thinking I'm gonna recommend a Richard Dawkins book which I will because the God delusion is amazing but if you want to read a book to really make you an atheist I'm gonna recommend the Bible so beyond the personal experiences of having a friend that was gay I got a lot of education in the medical field. I actually went to medical school for a couple of years and the thing that I learned that was most important wasn't the technicalities of how to diagnose different things or specifics about how the human body works. It was how to be analytical, how to be critical, how to use my brain to think critically, how to be skeptical. Those things are what made me really question the Bible and really question these things that I had just been indoctrinated to believe that I had just taken at face value for so long. And another really big thing that I learned was to say, I don't know. I don't have the answers. I mean, a lot of times patients would come in and they would be very frustrated whenever you couldn't give them a very specific diagnosis. There's a term in medicine called idiopathic. It's what you say whenever you do not know the cause for something. Sometimes all the tests that you do to diagnose somebody come back negative. There's nothing wrong with them and a lot of them don't want to hear that. They want you to tell them they have something, even if that something is horrible, because having an answer feels good. It makes you feel like you're in control of your life. And whenever it comes to religion, there are a lot of things in this life you know, whenever you think about philosophy, whenever you think about our origins, whenever you think about how small we are and how much is out there in the very beginning of things, sometimes you start to question, you know, how it happened, you know, is there something more? These are normal questions. But what isn't okay is to just fill these things with an answer or God, using the God of the gaps, I'm sure you guys have heard of that. It's not okay to do that whenever you don't have the answers. You should use science. This should be something that provokes you into wanting to discover more things, not just giving yourself an answer because I don't know isn't good enough. Sometimes it should be. And when people come to me and they're like, well, prove me wrong. Tell me why there isn't a God. Prove that there is no God. I can't do that just as much as I can't prove that there is no flying pink unicorn, that there's no flying spaghetti monster. I can't prove any ridiculous claim. And a lot of people use the phrase, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence which is the most ridiculous argument that I, I could ever hear somebody use because like I said, that could literally be applied to anything that I make up. The burden of proof is not on me. The burden of proof is on the person making this extraordinary claim. You've all heard it, right? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If you don't have evidence, I'm not gonna believe it. I put a very high value on evidence. A lot of people point to any random thing that they see and you will see Christians and people of all different faiths doing this all the time, where they say, well, just look at the trees, look at the stars, look at the beautiful nature. God did that. That's not evidence. That's evidence of trees and evidence of stars and evidence of nature. 
not evidence of something supernatural that there actually is no evidence for. A lot of these people cling to different religions and sometimes very specific things within that religion and they don't realize that there's around 4,200 different religions in the world right now and they don't believe in 4,199 of them, yet they're so certain in the one that they've picked and everyone else is wrong except for them. And their evidence is just that feeling that they have. Oh, from my scientific education, it's very hard for people to say evidence whenever it comes to stuff like that. Just the same where they're like, oh, that's just a theory. When talking about evolution, they don't realize that gravity is a theory. These are words that you can't just throw out there. My standard for evidence is peer-reviewed, testable, evidence, falsifiable. The stars are pretty is not evidence to me, sorry. And the dangerous part of this is people actually take a lot of this stuff literally. They think the earth is 6,000 years old. It terrifies me that otherwise intelligent people from hopefully an intelligent species cannot reason to that low of a degree. I mean, you can show somebody something, you can put the actual evidence right in front of their face and they'll ignore it because some ancient book of fairy tales says something else. And they cling so strong to this belief in something out there that they're not gonna believe something that's right here. And I don't like the fact that a lot of religions teach people to not think. It's almost like your mom is yelling at you and says you can't do something. A lot of times you would say, why, right? And then she responds saying, because I said so. What child is like, oh, okay, yeah because she said so. That makes sense. I'm satisfied with that answer. I don't think so. I think every kid would be like, no, I wanna, I wanna fucking know why. But in a religious world, whenever God says something, you don't question it. The because I said so answer is A-okay. Do not question anything in religion. You know, if God actually did create you with everything that you have, then he created you with a brain. So if you are really religious and you can't get around the fact that maybe there isn't a God, at least don't cling to these ancient ridiculous things, things that are presented to you as fact that are clearly untrue and things that are presented to you as moral that clearly aren't, at least throw those out. I don't believe that an all-knowing, all-powerful, benevolent God would actually punish those people. I think he would actually appreciate atheists for being honest with themselves and people around them. According to Christians, if we were created as sinners, then we were created imperfectly on purpose. And if we weren't created imperfectly, if we were perfect in the Garden of Eden and God knows everything, he knew that they were gonna eat that fruit, he knew that they weren't perfect, he knew they were gonna sin, he knew all of this was going to happen and he let it happen anyways. That means we would have been purposefully made to fall into sin and temptation. And the only way out of this is to worship and essentially ass kiss the very being that put us into this shitty situation to begin with. Either that or burn in hell forever. How do people think that this is a wonderful God? Like, that's really fucked up. I'm gonna screw you over, make you to do bad things, and then threaten to punish you for those bad things that I made you do unless you kiss my ass forever or burn in hell for all of eternity. That's really wonderful. And I'm sorry, I don't care what you say. You cannot deny that a society that is less religious is more tolerant of other people. So these are some of the reasons why I'm an atheist, how I became an atheist. I think that overall, Religion is a bad thing. And even though I don't believe in religion, I talk about it a lot, and this is something that people don't understand, but it's because I live in a society that's heavily influenced by religion. It affects my life daily, and I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to fight for people's rights that are being taken away by something that I think is outdated and unnecessary. And I don't miss it. I don't at all. I feel so much better. I feel like a weight has been lifted from my shoulders, and I feel more fulfilled in my life. I appreciate every day that I have, because I know that there isn't anything for me after I die. And the same thing for other people. Try to go out of your way to help other people because it's also all that they have. Sending prayers to a starving child in Africa does absolutely nothing for them. Sending money does. Don't try to make yourself feel better by saying, I'm praying for them, God will reward them in heaven. There's actually something in the Bible about that, or, you know, happy are those who are poor, whatever. I don't know exactly how it goes, but it says they'll be granted everlasting life or something. You know what? No, they won't. Help them now. This is it. This is all we have. So yeah, atheism makes me a better person. It makes me a happier person. It makes me appreciate the only life that I have. I'm not waiting for anything after I die. I'm living now. I'm a better person now. And that's why I make videos like this. Because I feel like this is such an important topic that so many people are afraid to talk about. They think atheism is this nasty negative thing. They think that atheism is a statement that you know that there is no God and you can't know that, but it isn't. It's just a lack of a belief in God because we have no evidence 
agnostic atheist, whatever it is that you want to call it to make yourself feel better. Everybody should technically be agnostic, by the way. But yeah, atheism is not a statement of knowing that there is no God. It's just saying, I don't believe it. And because of that, I promote life in a secular society. So those are my thoughts. I know that I rambled a lot in this video. It wasn't really planned. These are just a lot of things that I have in my mind all the time about the topic. And I, I talk about atheism a lot in my videos, but there aren't very many where I just sit down and give you my reasons for why I personally am not religious and why I think it's so important. So those are all my thoughts. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it everywhere. Leave a comment in the comment section below because I think that this conversation would be very interesting to be carried on. Share this with people. I feel like I worded things in this video as soft as I possibly could. So if there's somebody out there who's on the fence, somebody out there who, you know, maybe is Christian and doesn't understand why people couldn't believe in God, show them this video. Hopefully it helps. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised that the author of this article about sex negativity is a woman because I would say probably about 90% of all of these slut shaming that I mentioned before that I experienced comes from women.